Welcome back. This is type 4 moveset of 2gen in this video series and I'm going to be touching on RW and U moves only. So for this moveset we're allowed to do these type of moves. This is different than all the other ones because those involved lowercase r or inner slice r but now it's wide r and upper u so there's no inner slices in this moveset. And this involves corners. You cannot avoid involving corners. And that's what I was saying at the end of the previous video that um, this is difficult and that's why it's rather intimidating. How in the world can you conquer the corners? That's the main problem with this. As well as it forces you to move a lot of wing edges as well. So this is 2 Gen Type 4. This is going to be RWU. Before we get our hands dirty, I want to take a look at a little bit of repetition and we're going to do a repetition example. The algorithm that we get from it is very long. It's hundreds of moves, but it's pretty understandable. Um, I, I believe you have to take this slowly and digest because you might get a headache if I go straight into it. And as I mentioned in the introductory video, if, just in case you skipped it, for the 4x4, the optimal is 26. I'm going to be deriving a 69 move algorithm, and then I'm going to settle with a 57 for the 4x4, that is. And then for the 5x5, the move optimal is 33, found by Ben Whitmore using his K-Solve++ program. Or maybe just K-Solve, I'm not sure, because he found that a long time ago. But he did find these other ones I have attributed to his name on this page with K-Solve++. But the algorithm I'm going to find for that is 177 moves. So quite a bit longer than the 57 for the 4x4. There's no, uh, it's not proportional to the length of the move optimal 5x5x5 five by five by five versus the move optimal 4x4 four four single dutch flip algorithms in this move set. But I think even then you will appreciate it based on how difficult it would be to conquer something like this for the 5x5 five five, where you have more than just the corners to conquer. Then you also have other types of pieces that are on the 5x5 five five that aren't on the 4x4. Four four. Let's just start with the simple basics. We're going to add some tools to our tool chest. First off, if I do RW2U2, I notice here that the cycles of the cycle types, this is the corners. So we have a 2-3 cycle of corners and we have this will be wing edges and that's X centers but notice that they're all three and they're all equal if I repeat this three times therefore I just go one two three then I have oh look at that yeah it's PLL parity for this move set even though I'm going to use this right now to show you a repetition example that's going to be hundreds of moves this is the key component to the 69 move algorithm. So this is a very important piece. I'm going to put that here and I guess I can label it PLL parity. Even though it's not, it discolors some centers, but for all intents and purposes, it's PLL parity. So the first step is, and this is a conjugate of that, I just rewrote PLL parity as a repeated sequence of three times. And this is a conjugate, but this is where I'm going with this. I want to conjugate this and it's possible to so that you isolate a one by one by three block into the U face. Even though these are broken up these arrows should be in the same direction if it was a perfect one by one by three block but we can still use it at the cost of more moves and a few extra steps we can still use this. So let me go through and walk you through these setup moves if I may. I can't do anything with these pieces unless some of them are in the U phase because I'm allowed to do the R move and U move and that's it. So I either do an R or an R prime, a quarter turn of this. That's the important thing, a quarter turn to get it into the U phase. Now I'm going to do a quarter turn of U so that I can slice through and break up one of these. Let's see here, it's a one by two by two block. And I chose to do it with an RW move. So we have things broken up now. That's good news. I did U prime next. Nothing interesting happens with that. But then that will set me up for the next step, which is, well, I could do a three cycle here if I wanted to. Hey, I could do that real quick for those who wanted to know a quick three cycle. Here we go. If I just do an RW prime, for example, 
or um, yeah, I'd have to do RW prime conjugate to this to get this piece isolated. Then I can use this conjugate here as the x in our piece isolating commutator x, y, and then I can do a u to give us a three cycle of wing edges if we wanted one. There you go. And it's long. It's 38 moves, but pretty easy, right? Pretty easy to make. So I can just keep this here as a tool in our tool chest if I want. But I'm removing that now. So at this point, I'm looking at this. So I did an RW prompt, so I have to do a U next. Let me do a U. And then I do an RW. And there we go. And now I'm not sure exactly why I did a U. It's not really necessary. This 1 by 1 by 3 block is already isolated in the U face. But just to follow my previous work, I'm just going to use a U prime, and I'm going to put this on one line. So this is what we start with. Since this is almost a 1 by 1 by 3 block isolated in the U face, we need to naturally make this our X and our isolating commutator XY and Y equal to U2. I guess I'll put it here on one line. All right. Now, we have a 3 cycle of 1 by 3 blocks worth of pieces, or 9 pieces here. This is the only one that's perfectly clean. These are not. But we have a perfectly clean one. That's what matters. So now I need to conjugate this. If I do R W R W prime, one of these is going to be in the U phase. So I have to do R W two to get everything out, but that one by one by three blocks that's genuine. So now we have a genuine one by three block isolated. So we're not going to see this mess anymore. Now when we let this equal the next x. In the next piece isolating commutator x, y. I'm going to put this on one line. So it's getting long. But this is pretty straightforward, I believe. That's why I have this. There we go. Very nice. So now we have a 3 cycle of 1 by 1 by 3 blocks that are all genuine. And for this derivation, I actually have the u2 in front. So the u2 is the x, and this is the y in this piece isolating commutator x, y. I'm not sure why, but I'm just going to go by that. But there we go. The next step is to let this be x and commutator x, y. Piece isolating is complete now. Let this be x and let rw be y and the commutator to follow. Now we have something interesting. What's even more interesting, and let me just show you the move count now. It's 198 so far, but I'm going to double that. If I double that, then I have this result here. And might be tempting now, since all these pieces in this R slice are complete. If I do an RW prime, well, take a look at this. Oh, it's also going to do the move capital R prime. I know that might be a little bit inconvenient, and we're going to have to settle with that for this first example to break in into 2 gen for this type, because it's so intense. If we would just ignore that and just look on the inside, like let me just temporarily... And, oh, that's just so easy to do, right? Oh, why can't we just do that? Not in this move metric. Very, very strict. But take a look at this. Very nice. Just a two cycle of wing edges and a two two cycle of X centers. So this is pretty much what we need. The only inconvenience is it's so many moves. And another thing is it also does an R prime of that face. Now, if we conjugate with one move, let's do RW prime then RW to make a diagonal case. We can make a single dash flip by cheating a little bit. Let me erase this. This is PLL parity, but this is basically taking PLL parity out from there and putting it in the top. It's pretty straightforward. I guess I could run through it real quick. The first move to conjugate is RW or RW prime. That's going to get this 1 by 2 by 2 block into the top. I need to now make this opposite from this one in the top. So I have to do a U2. And then I can do an RW2 to join them. And then finally, um, I guess do a U. You can do a U prime. It doesn't make any difference to get it in the position that PLL parity is in. And this is 14 moves. This is probably an algorithm that's on the wiki at, at speedsolving.com. Without that U turn, I have maybe a Y cube rotation. But the important thing about this, 
When you combine this with a diagonal, you're not going to change anything except mirror that diagonal. And it's going to, the important thing is this. Just as we've seen in the previous videos with 2gen, it's going to rotate this center 180 degrees. And there's, uh, well this is rotated, but that's the R face, so it really doesn't matter. But if we just take what we found before and take a look at it. It's a diagonal where the right and back left are switched. But when we do PLL parity, it's simply going to make the mirror of that case, but it's going to it's also going to solve back this composite center so that we can with a in this case RW, RW prime. And I guess I'll put this like this. We can make a single dutch flip, and that will pretty much be the end of this example. It's quite a bit of moves. I'm not going to bother trying to simplify this out. But that is the first example. Very, very easy, but very, very long, and also it does this as well. So we're kind of ignoring something, putting off a problem for later to deal with. For those who do not want to proceed any further to have me spoil it for them on how I found the 69 move algorithm, how I dealt with the corners for the 4x4, then stop watching this right now. Go spend as much time as you want trying to figure this out for yourself. But this is what I did. This is a nice move sequence. It is 10 moves long and it will, the key thing is, it does a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. As long as it's even, that means it's an odd permutation. So that means that we can build a single dash flip algorithm from this technically because it is an odd permutation. It does an odd permutation to the wing edges, that's the wing edges, but it does no permutation at all to the corners. It basically restores them back. And this is the center move right here. This is technically, I guess, the extra quarter turn. And even though that this is the quarter turn here and these look like conjugates of the quarter turn, I derived it linearly without conjugation in other words. So let me walk you through it. Basically the idea is this. I want to put the corners as they are in the U face and the order that they're in into the R slice. This is a technique that's used in 2gen for maybe cycling edges on a 3x3 or flipping them, for example. I want corner 1 here, corner 2 there, corner 3 here, corner 4 there. Or um, if we look at it this way, 1, 4, 3, 2, so I want corner 1 here, corner 4 here, corner 3 here, corner 2 there. I want something like that. And the corners in an orientation also, as you'll see in a little bit, that will not change their orientation. I'm going to go through the move sequence one move at a time. We can either start with U or RW, so I just started with RW. Then I did U. Corner one is in, but it's not in the correct way. The correct way is like this. I want them to look like three, but I want them to be in order as they are in the U face that I told you previously. So three is already in. I'm going to move that down because that's already in the R slice in the manner I desire. Corner one is not, so well there you go. I made it as I made it in the correct order, but that's not the one of focus here. The one of focus now is four is incorrectly now. It's in the correct orientation as three was, and I have four three. When I do the next move, now one is now I can see that one is in the correct orientation that it needs to be in. And also look, 2 is as well. Look at this. So I have 4, 3, 2, 1. I go back to the clean cube. I have 4, 3, 2, 1. And they're all in that orientation. So from this logic, now that I've seen this, and let me just show you here. This was the quarter turn that I did. So 4, 3, so 4 goes to 3, 3 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1. What is that equivalent to on the cube itself? 4 goes to 3, 3 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1. That's equivalent to if I would have did a U move. So that's why the last move is a U prime. But now I just undo all of the moves that I did before that quarter turn or like the turn of the U face. I'm mimicking that. But I'm doing it in the R slice. So I undo these moves now. And once I undo them, let me just go here. This is the quarter turn. Now I'm going to undo them. And now I'm just a, because I did a U of the corners, 
I'm going to do a U prime to undo all of what I've done with the corners. That's how I made the 69 move algorithm. So that's a spoiler. So with this one hint, if you want to stop now and try to figure out this from this point on how to make a brief single dash slip algorithm, at least briefer than several hundred moves, stop it, spend as much time as you want to try to figure it out, then come back if you want to verify that you are correct, you're on the right path, or if you just don't know and you just want to see it go through, but just don't want to spoil it for you. Okay. What I will do is I'll start with the 69 move single Dutch flip algorithm and then I will do um, an FMC insertion technique that will yield a 57 move single Dutch flip algorithm. But this is my plan for the rest of this move set. I'm first going to construct the 69 move single Dutch flip algorithm. Then I'm going to apply the same idea to the 5x5 to find the 177 move algorithm. So I'll give you a foundation to build from, and then you can explore that as well, as well as other two cycle cases and four cycle cases, and even a three flip algorithm. Using this general technique, you can get a 79 three flip dead flip algorithm for the 4x4, for example. Okay, so the plan is, again, 69 move for the 4x4, then 177 move for the 5x5, and then the 57 move for the 4x4 with the insertion technique. And then I'm going to show you something a little bit different. I'm going to show you how to do the move R2 on the 4x4 and also just the move R. And that's how I will conclude this move set. From that point on, I'm sure people who are creative can come up with algorithms for all other types of cases and shorter algorithms and just have fun with this. Now those five different move sequences that I'm going to derive for the rest of this move set, it's 11 pages of work. So what I'm going to do is show you the written work with the steps in bold font. And if you're annoyed by me explaining so many different things for such difficult content, and you just want to read the outline, you're more than welcome to. You can put this video on mute. This is a tool for you. This is not going to hurt my feelings if you do so. I hope you enjoy this presentation. And thanks again for watching. All right, so this is for the 69 move dead flip for the 4x4. We start with that eight cycle of wings move sequence and what we're going to do is this is the key component here after this component here which enables us to tackle the corners and we're simply going to be using conjugates of PLL parity and we'll see in a little while we're going to be creating a three cycle with PLL parity different than the three cycle that I derived previously one that does a three cycle of one by one by two blocks instead of just individual wing edges but if we apply this to the cube let me just walk you through this step right here. You can simply apply this to the cube and see what the result is, but you can do this linearly. The idea is this. This dead shear is complete. I need to put it here. So if I do PLL parity between this dead and this dead somehow with some setup moves, can I? Yes, I can. PLL parity is just RW2U2 times 3 which I have expanded out for future work, but this is what that is. It switches these two digits here. Keeping that in mind, all I have to do is put the two digits which I need to be swapped in this part of the cube, and then I can just undo those setup moves to achieve the result that I want. So it is this part right here, which I need to swap with this part right here. This is already in this part of the cube. I need to get this part over here. In order to do that, the shortest number of moves is U2, then RW, and U2. Now this is opposite to that. Now I have to do an R prime. You cannot forget to do the R prime, or you can just do an R like I did. I'll just follow my example. From this point, now they're here, I can do PLL parity. I simply invert those moves now. And now I'm left with, well, if we go take a look, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we go from 10 moves to 24, but we solve two additional wing edges. And also we reduce some centers as well. If we go back, we see that this is a larger cycle of X centers, but it's reduced. This 4 here doesn't get reduced because that's the blue X centers that's in a 4 cycle in the R face, but this gets reduced as well. You can experiment with this because PLL parity switches this one by two center block with this one. 
and sometimes it gets tricky. Sometimes you, you can solve back wing edges, but you don't solve back as many X centers, or you might unsolve some more X centers than you need to in the process of trying to solve back wing edges. So it can get very complicated, but with this first application of PLL parity, as I will call it, it's pretty straightforward. It solves back this dead shear. So from this point, I apply yet another application of PLL parity. Let's take a look at the setup moves to PLL parity. We already know what PLL parity is, and we already know what their inverse does. The key thing to focus on is the setup moves themselves. Okay, well, if I look here, maybe what I wanted to do is what I said I wanted to do. I wanted to join 10 and 14, and then put them in where 9 and 22 currently are. And that's why I have the pieces numbered and I have a numbered cube. So join 10 and 14 as a completed paired dedge and switch it with dedge 922 which is currently 922 and it's going to stay 922 with these setup moves. That's important. That with these setup moves the dedge is currently 922 and is in the location where dedge 1014 needs to go once we pair it up. It's going to stay 922 with these setup moves. And with these setup moves I'm going to pair this 10 and 14 up and I'm going to prepare to be switched with this dedge such that the orientation of the dedges allows the dedge 1014 to be solved back completely and not put in flipped incorrectly. Okay, so let's begin. 10 and 14 are going to be paired up with the following setup moves. Pretty straightforward. When you're doing this, these have to be diagonal to each other. If 10 is here, you're going to have to do some additional setup moves or you might want to shift the whole algorithm until you get something like this because if not you're going to be using a lot of setup moves in order to get something like this where these are diagonal instead of like 14 C or 10 is there or 14 is here 10 is there that's not good as you can see now they're paired and I need to I need to position to be switched with 922 so now I need to do an RW prime move, but beforehand I did that U so that I can move this down without affecting this. Now I put them opposite to each other and I do one final move. And it can be RW, it doesn't have to be RW prime. But RW will work. Now they're in position to be switched with PLL parity. I'm just going to simply paste PLL parity and their inverse. And now all of a sudden we have a four cycle. And I think we solved additional, if I just erase this, this is four X center pieces unsolved. Besides these four, the other ones, it's just four of them. If I do this, well, it actually is the same amount. So we kind of got lucky there. And I'll say lucky because, again, PLL parity switches this one by two center block with the other one. So you can observe on your own time an explanation of why we still only have four. But that's that step. Now, I'm going to skip to step six because this is a separate piece that we're going to be deriving as well. So technically right now, we started with an 8 cycle, and then we applied a 2-2 cycle, and then another 2-2 cycle, such that we're left with a 4 cycle. PLL parity is a 2-2 cycle of wing edges. It swaps this wing edge with that one, and this wing edge with that one. You don't think of it as switching two dedges, this dedge and that dedge in this case. It's better to think of as this one switches with this one and this one switches with this one. So we apply two two cycles to reduce an eight cycle to a four cycle. From this point, we could use another two two cycle to reduce this four cycle into a two cycle, which is just a conjugate of a single dutch flip. In order to apply another two two cycle to make this four cycle into a two cycle, if we were just going to do one more iteration, then we would have to pair 1 and 9 together, for example, or 22 and 19. Well, like, I want 22 to switch with 19, or I want 19 to switch with 1, so that 19 is solved, and when 22 switches with 19, obviously 22 would be solved. Something like that. So I'd have to pair 1, 9, 22, and 19, and 2 dedges in some fashion, set them up for PLL parity, and then switch them with PLL parity, then undo those setup moves, to create a two cycle. Alternatively, I found that simply using a three cycle will equate to the same number of moves or even fewer. And all we have to do is just match two different algorithms together, maybe by uh, mirroring one or conjugating or, or shifting one or both or some combination of the above. 
which is fairly simple to do. Especially if you have two separate virtual cubes, it's really easy to match them. And that's what I'm going to do from this point. Instead of trying to pair them into dedges and doing PLL parity, what I could do is I could show you real quick how this could work without caring about the number of moves. Let's say I want to switch 22 and 19 and then 1 and 9. That means that 9 and 22 or 9 and 19 need to be in the same dash and then 22 and 1 need to be in the other. I have to set a goal on which wing edges I want to switch with what. If I want to switch 22 with 19 such that 22 is solved and I want to switch 1 and 9 such that 1 will be solved then I cannot have 1 and 9 in the same dash and I can't have 22 and 19 in the same dash but any of the other combinations are possible. So going with that premise where I want to switch 1 and 9 and I want to switch 22 with 19. I could for example try to we can just see what works and I'm just going to use setup moves I'm not even going to use shifts I'm just going to try to keep this in mind and not worry about the X centers either and see what happens what's the most readily readily available so U R W I'm trying to pair 9 and 22 because I can 9 and 22 can be paired because I don't want to switch them I want to switch 1 and 9 so in order to pair 9 and 22 I do that and then 1 and 19 where's 1 and where's 19 1 is down here 19 is here okay I can I'm trying to put 19 in the top and it just works out really nicely that these are diagonal to each other and then I move this down and it happens also that sometimes 9 and 22 will be here when you pair 1 and 19 and you'll have them adjacent you're gonna have to figure out a way in order to either shift the whole algorithm and start over again or do some extra setup moves beforehand some insertions or something or maybe uh, worse comes to worse an extra iteration to uh, get rid of that maybe the quickest way is to I guess uh, if 22 and 9 were here then you can't do this you can't do this and then slice because that would break up 22 and 9 okay so I'm doing those the easiest way though would be to just temporarily do PLL parity as a setup move where for example you would do this you would do if if 22 and 9 were here and you have 1 and 19 here and you cannot do an RW move to slice because they're adjacent you would temporarily put 22 and 9 here with PLL parity with PLL parity then you would undo that and then you would have it you would have to do PLL parity twice to, to fix that that's one easy way to do it but it costs moves but anyway from this point I'm gonna switch 22 and 9 with 19 and 1 so how about this I want to do this and then here here 19 switches with 22 is that correct yes 19 switches with 22 however what if it was 1 and 19 how would I deal with that well how do you flip a dead on the 4x4 if I just this is the other dead I need to switch this one with it's over here so it's okay if I do the following moves if I just do R U2 RW prime and then I would do this then I would have the other way does 19 want to switch with 9 no I, I don't want 19 to switch with 9 I want 19 to switch with 22 so it had, I would have to flip this dead in the same manner that I showed you so this is a basic move sequence to correct that inconvenience if you want to do a linear solve so to speak this is what you would have to do you would have to apply some logic like this but anyway let me go ahead and do this I want to put this there and then here and then here so 1 and 9 19 and 22 just what I want that's what I was aiming for this way I'll, I will solve back 1 and I'll solve back 22 to create a 2 cycle as we will see shortly so if I just copy and paste PLL parity and this is a lot of setup moves so I'm gonna put them on one line and I'm going to simply uh, put this in parentheses and let the program invert them for me and as you can see here now we have a 2 cycle and we still have 4 X centers 
undone, but sometimes it'll be two and sometimes it'll be more than four. It just depends. But from this point, one important thing to note is that as long as the cycle type of the X centers is disjoint four cycles, disjoint three cycles, or disjoint two cycles, whatever the case may be, you can conjugate it so that it doesn't discolor any centers. But if the number of X centers is five or more, you cannot. It is impossible. You will have to apply a center move sequence to correct at least one of the centers on the supercube. On the supercube, that's important. Or you can see in a program like Cube Twister, it will tell you. This is a supercube representation here. But if it's four or fewer, then you can. And the reason why is there's four of each color on the n by n Rubik's Cube. So for example, if I wanted to, and again, without any shifting or worrying about the number of moves, let me just try to switch all white with white. I only have two red, two yellow, two purple, and then I have four white in reach of this move set. So I have to choose to switch all white with white. That's my only option if I have a four cycle, which is the most extreme, or even if I have a three cycle of X centers. I can conjugate it so that they're not discolored, but I have to choose white to be the centers which are not permuted correctly on the supercube. So it's pretty simple. This is a discolored center here, and here's one here, so I'll just focus on that. If I just put this center here, there, with a U2 setup move, and I do that U2 setup move, then I do a RW prime. I want this to move up with RW, so I have to do a RW prime at the beginning. Now they're they're paired up, and this is this was the easy case. Sometimes they're going to be dis disjoint, but I have to make the composite center in the U face go in the U prime direction. But in order to do that, I have to conjugate with U, which is the opposite. Now they're lined up, and now I can just do RW prime and then RW to not discolor any of those centers. And as you can see, we have a two cycle here. It's pretty short, I guess. These are not the moves of this is not canceled, so it's going to be short. We have an 88 adjacent oriented case of a two cycle. But those are very important pieces of information that should you want to do a linear solve of this and then maybe conjugate it at the end like this to finish it off. That's all useful tips that you should know. But anyway, I, I guess I better separate these two two cycle iterations so things don't get confusing and I'll put a space there also, maybe. So now I'm going to go to the three cycle as I promised. So separately we want to create a three cycle of one by one by two blocks. So let's just observe the conjugate here. We start with PLO parity. Then we do a one move conjugate to get in the U face. We do a U prime move so that we position these one by two by two blocks to be broken up. And then we break them up with another setup move. So we can simply let that algorithm be X in our piece isolating commutator X, Y, and either U or U2 or U prime be our Y in piece isolating commutator X, Y. In this example, I'm going to use U prime. So there you go. So this is the next step. With this piece on hand, we're going to expand it, and then we're going to shift it two moves backwards so that it looks like this, where this is the key thing. In the right face, think top, back, wing. That's all you have to remember because the way this looks is like this. If you ever solve with K4, when you have a wing edge that goes here, and then one that goes there, and one goes there, a three cycle like this, then these are all oriented, so you can just think of it like that. Where literally, when you do an R turn to this cube, where R, where the R face is blue, 10 is going to go to where 6 is, 6 is going to go to where 17 is, and then 17 is going to go to where 13 is, and 13 is going to go to where 10 is. These are oriented, so to speak. With that in mind, just think back top. And then another wing edge that involved is this one down here. And then the top front, you can just come back to this or have this on a separate virtual cube. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up a separate virtual cube to help us visualize here. So this is the first one with the three cycle. So starting out on a clean cube, I'm going to go back now to our result from step three. I need to make an adjustment to this so that three of the wing edges that are affected are in the locations from the three cycle that we have already. In order to do that, I have to move or shift six of the moves at the beginning of the algorithm to the end of the algorithm. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 
So I take those moves, I cut and paste. And as we can see, look at this. This is a 1 by 2 block unsolved. This is a 1 by 2 block unsolved. And well, I need to have the third wing edge here, but I can with a, I need the top to go in a U prime direction. So I need to conjugate this with U. And that's what the next step is. So if I conjugate this with a U and a U prime, then I have a 1 by 1 by 2 block there, and one here, and one here, just like the 3 cycle. Because it's important that I solve back some X centers along with the wing edges with the 3 cycle, so that I can easily conjugate the resulting 2 cycle that I'm going to get from this combination of a 4 cycle and 3 cycle. So step 4 was to shift 6 moves, and then I conjugate with you, so that's step 5, and we've already done step 6. And now we just combine them together. So this is the 4 cycle. And this is the 3 cycle. Let's see how they look together combined. And here it is. This is 4 X centers. That's the blue. But I only have 2 now of the X centers unsolved. This is very, very easy to deal with now. How do I now conjugate this into a single dead flip? That's the next question. Well, step 8 says to shift all the moves that are in parentheses, which I put in here to the beginning of the algorithm, or sort of cut them from here and paste them at the very beginning of the algorithm. So if I come here and I paste that, this is the parentheses moves. I'm just going to remove those from there. And I'm going to take this and shift it to here. So this was experimentation, but this allows you to do the fewest number of outer setup moves or conjugation. Cyclic shifting is technically conjugation itself, but this is a special type where you don't change the number of moves your algorithm has. So I shifted there and look at this. If I can just get this wing edge here, this discolored center is going to be on the left side with this wing edge. This discolored center is on the right side with this wing edge. So if I just get this in the left half and conjugate with RW2, I'm done. So let's just do U and U prime to see it. Now I do RW2 and RW2 to finish it off. And it's 78 moves uncanceled, which is very, very good. Now if we invert all quarter turns of U and all quarter turns of RW, we can move this detch to the front and we can also cancel all the moves. So this here is canceling all the moves and this is inverting all the quarter turns of U and RW. And I'll show this and then we're done. So there you go, that's the 69. Now we're going to apply the same idea to the 5x5x5. Five by five by five we will achieve a 177 move algorithm with that. Okay, so 5x5 five five edge flip, or two cycle of wing edges in the same composite edge. First of all, we need to find a sequence for PLL parity for the 5x5, five five, which is analogous to the one that we have for the 4x4. Four four. We want something like this on the 5x5. Five five. This is RW3 times 2 on the 5x5. Five five. Additionally, besides doing what we wanted to do, it also switches this plus centerpiece with this one and also switches these two midges or middle edges and also these two middle edges. We need to somehow just make it affect just these pieces and you'll see in a second. We need to saw back some of these pieces so to speak. And this is a spoiler right here. Let's observe what this commutator does right here. This commutator does a U-perm of the middle edges on a 5x5. Five and it's all in 2 gen. So from this point, recall that I need to solve back this middle edge and this middle edge by switching them as they are in this fashion. But I need to also switch this middle edge with this middle edge here. So I need to conjugate this so that I have these two switched and then these two switched. If I do RW2 and I undo that, then I have one there and these two, these two are here. And now I can do a U2 to get this over here, opposite of this one. Now all I have to do is either an RW or, or an RW prime. And as we can see here, I chose to do a RW. So now applying that last setup move, I'm just going to copy this conjugate here. Then I have this. Now if I combine this with PLL parity, Then I have what I am aiming to have. This is PLO parity on the 5x5. So instead of being 6 moves, it's 24.
but if but of course some of these moves will cancel but still it's going to be more moves than the 4x4 so that's one of the reasons why this algorithm by default is going to be longer than the 4x4 using this method and as I mentioned earlier in this series the optimal algorithm for the 5x5 is longer I think it's 33 moves and for the 4x4 it's 26 in this move set okay so I skipped one step and that was this how did I figure out the uperm well, if I just copy the X in the commutator XY, we can see Y. Well, this is basically PLO parity from the 4x4 if I just do a U2 move. And it's not really necessary to do a U2 move. It costs an extra move because it's 14 moves. But it, this, it works out the same as if I just do that because just like... Uh, because just like with the piece isolating commutator for the standard algorithm, if I do L, U2, R prime, this one by, no, well then in this case it's for the 5x5 five five now, it's a 1x1x4 one by one by block, is isolated in the U phase without me even having to do a U2 move. I don't have to do that U2 move to have this isolated in the U phase, it's kind of redundant. So a similar idea holds true here. I don't need to have the full PLO pair to isolate midges in the top like this, from this point, I just would use a U or U prime to make an H perm. Anyway, that's how this PLL parity works with a 5x5. Five five. So this is PLL parity, which again looks like this. And this is in condensed notation. So this is it expanded. And now this step basically is saying that we need to make a 3 cycle like we did for the 4x4. Four four. And this is the quote unquote formula that we use to create a 3 cycle for the 4x4 four four, so we will just basically insert the 5x5 five five PLO parity in place of PLO parity that's written right here so this is the formula and I'm just going to insert PLO parity for the 5x5 five five, and then we get a 3 cycle of 1x1x2 one by one by blocks so that's one step I'm gonna keep this on this cube and I'm gonna go to the other cube to try to create an 8 cycle for the 5x5 five before I do that, let me mention this, that this is it expanded, and the moves in parentheses is PLL parity. But I'm going to remove those parentheses now to have this. And now, all of these moves in parentheses here, I want to shift all this to the end of the algorithm to, to create the same three cycle that we had for the 4x4 four four example. And that's this result. So see, this is pretty much very close to what we had for the 4x4 four four example top, back, wing, edge, then here, and then we have, well, this I might need to conjugate it with a U prime move. But we'll take a look at that in a little bit. We'll see what we need to do. We may not have to for the 5x5. Five five. But let's take note of this 3 cycle and let's call it star. It's going to be a very quick derivation from this point on. So let's go to step 3. We're still keeping star in mind because we're going to use star later. But we're going to mirror it about M and rotate it about Y2 and, or in other words invert all quarter turn moves so instead of the left here it's going to be the right it's a nice little trick and we're also going to conjugate with RW so that we have them in the bottom like this in this formation now for the 8 cycle for the 5x5 five five. if I apply that same move sequence that we use for the 4x4 four four to the 5x5 five five, well it affects more pieces than we had for the 4x4 four four. but just to make this brief Notice that there's a 3 cycle here and there's a 3 cycle here. What would happen if I repeat this 3 times? That should get rid of those 3 cycles, right? So let's just go ahead and I'm not going to multiply by 3, I'm just going to paste it 3 times. And this looks very similar to what we have for the 4x4 four four example. But unfortunately, if we go back, compare this now. If we apply it once, this is similar to the 4x4 four four example where we had 18 and 2 and we solved them back with one PLL parity. Unfortunately, when we repeat this three times, we don't have a completed pair of wing edges anymore. So that's one sacrifice we had to make in addition to tripling the number of moves that we start with for the 5x5. Five five. So this is yet another reason why the 5x5 five five algorithm is longer than the 4x4 four four using this method. But that's what we have to work with. But take a look at this. We have a 1x1x2 one by, one by block here, and we have one here, and we have one here as well. So we maybe we can use the three cycle immediately without even having to do PLL parity at all and that's what I believe I use for this 177 move algorithm but you can play with PLL parity for the 5x5 five five with this and see what you can get now this is the three cycle that's a reflection and a conjugate of three cycle star 
it cycles the one by one by two blocks in this fashion and this is the four cycle we have so if we combine them together and I, I in this derivation I just put the three cycle first so first the three cycle and then the three cycle is going the opposite direction of this so if when you apply this you have the same number of pieces unsolved you need to simply invert either one of them I would just invert the three cycle for simplicity to solve back some pieces so now we have a six cycle of wing edges remaining instead of eight and again let's just take a look one more time this is the three cycle here so it's the top front and then it just goes from that point on in a circular fashion so now I have these so 22 goes to 14 14 goes to 10 and 10 goes to 22 so now that we have this, now this took a little bit of experimentation, but not much. It was only three shifts. If we take the last three moves, then we shift them to the beginning. So you don't have to always take the first moves and make them the last moves. Especially if you have quarter turns, it's ideal to whatever side the, all these quarter turns are on. That's, that's when the most change is going to happen with shifts in this move set, not with RW2s and U2s. It's not going to really change too much. But if you have a whole bunch of quarter turns, that's what you want to shift. That, that's probably going to give you the most drastic change in the fewest number of shifts. So that's why I chose to shift backwards. But it also works out as well. Then I have this. Now I'm taking a look at this one by one by two block and this one and this one. That if I move this here, this there, and then well this will come down here. It's a little bit of inconvenience. But I solved two, two additional ones basically. I solved 18 and 10. Now I go back and I combine star. And I'm going to do use star yet again, so that's why I labeled it star. And here it says to combine with the inverse. So this is the algorithm piece we have, and this is the inverse of star. This is an illustration. This is star highlighted. I'm going to paste it here. So it cycles these wing edges in these locations, along with the X center that's stuck to them. And this is what we have. So it's very close to what we want. If we apply star now, we still have six wing edges that are undone so we have to it's it's a giveaway that well we're almost there but we just simply need to take the inverse of star in order to solve back those pieces so we have four pieces now undone we're moving up in moves here but this is a very easy process and we're also decreasing the number of center pieces that we have unsolved that's that's a very good thing and notice here that we have two four cycles of pieces well and for the 5x5, five five, it's counting this 4 cycle of X centers here and this 4 cycle of plus centers here. So 2 out of the 3 of these 4 cycles just represents what's happening in the R face, or the blue centers, which is not a focus. In other words, we only have 4 X centers that are permuted on the supercube, and those are these. So now the next step is to shift the first 4 moves. When I say shift without saying backwards, that means take it from the beginning of the algorithm and move it to the end. Therefore, I'm taking the first four moves and I'm moving them to the end of the algorithm. And then I'm going to also, it looks like, conjugate with the U prime. Let's take a look at those two steps. This is our current result right here. Take the first four moves and move it to the end. And I have this. This almost looks like the same formation as star. I have one here, one here. And I need the third one, which is right here, potentially because it's already in the top. I don't want to worry about this one. That would be too much trouble. And look at this, it's already in place that this looks like this could be the single dutch flip already ready for us, which is very neat. If I move this here, I need to move the pieces in the U face in the U direction. So therefore, the I need to put a U there, but in order to put a U there, I have to put a U prime here. And that's a setup. And now they're ready for, well, you guessed it. And it says here to combine with the inverse of, of star again. So we're using the same exact thing. So I'm pasting it there, and now we have a single dutch flip, and we only have a two cycle of X centers. Therefore, this is a very similar type of algorithm to the 69 for the 4x4. It's just for the 5x5, and we just excessively use the three cycle. And that three cycle is much longer than it is with a 4x4, hence the move count, but yet very easy to do. It should be obvious, but from this point, all I need to do is, well, this... This colored center here is in the right slice, and this one is also. If I just make this into the left half of the cube, then 
I can do an RW2 move to switch white with white. The pieces in the U face need to move in a U direction. Therefore, I need to do a U prime and then U. And then I do an RW2, which is not going to mess up this pairing of the dedges here. So we'll still have a single dedge flip, but it won't discolor any centers. And that is the 5x5 five five algorithm. When we expand and we take the inverse of all those three cycle stars and everything and we cancel moves, we're going to get 177. And that's the 5x5. Five five. I'm going to stop this video here and let the next video be for the 57 move single dutch flip algorithm for the 4x4 four four, as well as doing the moves R2 and R. Because from this point, yet again, I don't want to spoil it for you. Let that be a challenge.